Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Vertical slice architecture is a different way of organizing your code and how you think about it than what you're probably used to. The primary driver are the capabilities and the features that your system provides rather than layers and how you separate technical concerns. What this does is it enables you to make localized decisions per feature or feature set. This does not mean that it's a free for all, a mixture of concerns such as database access, mixed with business logic. That's not the case. Let me explain how it works and how you need to change your thinking. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. Now, first, what I want to do is I want to compare it to what you're probably more familiar with, which is the separation of technical concerns. And the reason that there is such a thing and why we have layering in a system is for this reason, is that if you've ever worked into a system that I call a turd pile, it's because it's mixing all these concerns together. So let's say you're working on a web application, maybe it's an HTTP API. So you have that part of the mix, you have some authorization, you have data access, and you have business logic. And what happens if you have no separation of any of these concerns, it becomes what I call a turd pile because it's really hard to manage. It's really hard to change your system without breaking other parts because you just, you have a lot of coupling and you have a lot of mixed concerns. And this is what drives people to a layered architecture, onion architecture, clean architecture, etc. It's separation of concerns and not having to mix those different technical concerns. It's about the direction of dependencies and coupling. I've done a video on clean architecture. So if you want more on that, check the links in the description. So I'm going to show you two different solutions in C-sharp.net. If you're familiar with a different platform, don't worry, you'll get the gist of this. So the first is a clean architecture template. This is kind of used to scaffold if you're creating a new project, a new solution that kind of gives you all these layers in clean architecture format here. So we have web UI. I'm going to open things up so you can see stuff. So we have things like controllers or pages, et cetera. We have infrastructure, which has things like services and persistence for data access. We have, I'll go into application, which this is the sample. It's kind of like a to-do item list thing here. So we can see we have to-do items and lists. And then we have domain, which has entities, enums, events, value objects, et cetera. So this is kind of the template of a clean architecture. Now we're looking at another project, which is a sample application called eShop on web. And it follows a very similar structure. It's got three projects, however. So there's application core, which is kind of like the domain and the application layer that was in that other template. We have infrastructure, which is the exact same thing. We have um, data, services, logging, et cetera. And then we have our web project, which is our top level in terms of ASP.NET core. And it's what you would expect in terms of controllers, pages, et cetera. So my question to you is when you're looking on that eShop on web project structure, what does it actually do? What does the system provide? What are the features and what are the capabilities? You could probably guess because it's called eShop on web that it's some e-commerce site, but what does it actually do? What are some of the features? You have no idea because there's folders called interfaces, services, entities, logging. What does that have to do again with what the system actually does? You have no idea because everything is organized by technical concern. Now, one of the comments and things that I hear constantly is this, when somebody new comes into our project and they're frustrated when they need to make a change that seems relatively trivial and they got to open 10 different files and jump around to figure out what's going on. Now, are layers and separation of concerns relevant? Yes. Can it be overdone? Absolutely. Are they needed everywhere? No. So the key part about all of this is understanding when you actually do want to separate concerns and when you don't. And finally, that leads us to vertical slice architecture. And the key aspect here, I mentioned it in the very beginning, is because you're driven by features, you're driven by capabilities, and you're organizing your code that way, then you can make decisions for a feature or for a feature set on how you want to separate concerns. Instead of it being a decision that you make for your entire application or a service or a system, rather now you can make it localized to a smaller unit of functionality. 
Now, as I mentioned also in the beginning, it's not a free for all of mixed concerns of data access, business logic, and just a free for all. No, that's why I'm using this picture is that I have a piece of cake here that has layers, but what we're trying to do is we're taking a slice out. We're taking a slice out that represents a feature, a feature set, and then within that, we can define what those layers are. So from a macro level, if we're talking about a very large system that has a lot of capabilities, we're gonna take all the capabilities, those features that are related together. And then from a micro level, within that kind of boundary of those pieces of functionality that we're grouping together, we can decide how we're implementing those features. So that means that taking our large, wide, monolithic layered system, and then rather splitting it up vertically, so vertical slices. So my mental model is really thinking about features first. And the number one question I get usually related to this is, well, then that means I can't share anything between features? No, because it's not just an individual feature, it's a limited set of related features that may have underlying shared concerns. That could be, for example, a data model, a domain model, that's all ultimately relying on the same database. But it's focusing on what the actual features are. So that means that maybe you have one feature set that is using some shared model. Maybe you have another feature set that's using a different data model. Underlying, they may be using the exact same physical database. But again, it's about grouping these pieces of functionality together. Now, one of the benefits is that for an individual feature or feature set, we can define what those layers are and how we want to separate concerns if we need to at all. So maybe one given feature in a feature set, we're using ASP.NET Core MVC, and that's the most appropriate thing. Then we have some policy-driven authorization, we're using Fluent Validation, and then we have Entity Framework for ORM, and we have some data model and we're persisting that to a database. Now separately, in a completely different feature set or feature, maybe we're using the minimal APIs and we have a role-based authorization there, some custom validation, and we're using Martin as our document database with Postgres. Again, now you can decide localized per individual feature or feature set how you want to implement layers or separation of concerns and whether you need to at all. Now, an important aspect is actually organizing your code this way. So I'm back on the eShop on web, I'm looking at application core, and I started to move things around. So this was how it was originally, and I've been moving stuff. I've created this folder called features in application core, and it's got things like account with um, login with two-factor, my account, reset authenticator, set password. Our basket has our checkout and being able to get the basket. Our orders has get my orders and get order details. So what do you think are the pieces of functionality and the capabilities of eShop on web? Now you start to see it because everything's organized that way. Now, if I drill into one of these files the get my orders, we can see that I have the controller. I have the view model, which is passed to the razor view. Um, I have our actual query, the query handler. Everything is here, including the razor view that lives right next to it. Now, looking back at our project structure, we still have these top level folders that are related to technical things. We still have interfaces, logging, services, specifications. What's in services? We have a basket service. What do you think is going to use that? The basket. <laughs> we don't need this in a folder called services. If I look at specifications, why do we have a folder called specifications? What is it related to? Well, we have a basket with item specification. Guess where that should be? With our basket. That's related to functionality provided by our basket. If I look at where this is used, I can guarantee you it's specifically everything that I've defined within the basket. The list goes on here. If I go into interfaces, we have a basket, iBasket service. Move it into basket. Basket view model service, move it into basket. This keeps going on. We don't need a folder for interfaces. We don't need a folder for services. Put things that relate together, together. Now what will start happening is that you'll boil this down to thinking about an individual request being a feature or a subset of features. So now you're thinking about requests and requests can either be a command that's gonna have some type of side effect that's gonna change state or it's gonna be a query that's just gonna be returning to a state and it's safe. It's gonna have no side effects. So CQRS is really just as simple at its basic level, at a service layer like this. You don't need to be using multiple databases, et cetera. I have a video on kind of the myths of that that you can check out. But it really does fundamentally start thinking about 
individual requests or a combination of requests as implementing a feature or a feature set. Now, when you start thinking about an individual request, then you start thinking about, well, maybe I do want to separate concerns where I have different logic that I need to execute a part of a pipeline of a request. And then you can decide what that pipeline looks like per actual request. So this means that let's say we have a, a feature in our system that's a request where we have it inbound from our controller. And maybe that request goes to some logging that we want to capture. Then we have to do some kind of trivial validation logic. And then maybe we have a wrapper, some retry logic around what our actual execution is. And then from there, we hit that our handler, our primary handler is the one executing that request. And then it ultimately sends that request all the way back. But what this allows you to do is have define what that pipeline is for a request. If for some part of the pipeline, you want to end it there, you can exit early and return. And this is called the Russian doll pattern. But it allows you now to start thinking about what are those separation of concerns that you had application wide, and now you've minimized that potentially to an individual request. Vertical slice architecture puts an emphasis on cohesion. That's the primary driver. That's kind of the mental shift where now what you're thinking of are what are the capabilities, the features of my system, and I'm going to group them together that way. At a more macro level, defining service boundaries, and at a more micro level on how we're actually organizing those set of capabilities in code. And you can still implement a separation of concerns using something like a request pipeline. And that doesn't mean that each individual feature is completely independent and siloed, they didn't share nothing. No, you can have a feature set that has cross-cutting concerns where there's a domain model or a data model that relates to a set of features. And that's fine to be sharing those between that feature set. If you have questions about vertical slice architecture, or you just want to talk to other developers about software architecture and design, make sure to join my channel where you get access to a private Discord server. To join, check the links in the description. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment, and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.